been excited for this. We've all been patiently waiting. And man, are you the viewer in luck for finding this video because I've played some of the Mario games and I'm an adult man on YouTube who's gonna react to this trailer. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. <laughs> Let's begin. Let me pump the brakes for half a second, point out that I'm not pandering in this video. I didn't need to dress up as Mario or Luigi to do this. No, instead I'm wearing a t-shirt of my own channel. Subscribe. Let's go to the subscribe button. Mario reference. The first thing that my expertise brings to the table when it comes to this movie trailer is that it looks beautiful. The animation is top tier. This is Illumination Studios. A lot of people aren't fans of them. I am. Secret Life of Pets 1 and 2 can burn in a fiery lake. I don't really see what the big fuss is when it comes to Sing 1 and 2 either. But Despicable Me and those lovable minions? Yes, please. I'm all in. The trailer's already conveying a lot of stuff. Number one, this is a large scale movie. Look at the size. Look at the stature of Bowser rolling up to this castle. He dwarfs the kingdom in size. Number two, Bowser's voiced by Jack Black. I can't even tell listening to it. Fantastic voice work. I don't know why people were worried though. Jack Black always delivers. And he's just proven it here again. Three, they're not playing Bowser off as a joke. This prehistoric god deserves our respect. You should be kneeling before his presence. The penguins are gonna learn this the hard way. This isn't my first playthrough of the trailer. Video game reference, subscribe. No, I've watched it a couple times and I wanna point something out. The moment the king comes out and gives that little idle threat, I laughed. I LOL'd, actually. I'm gonna do a recreation for you so you can get the full effect of what happened. That is but a taste of our fury. <laughs> do 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 don't go anywhere. There's more to talk about. Here's our hero. Not the most exciting way to introduce him, getting smashed around on the mushrooms, but he's clearly in shock. He's not from this kingdom. So I guess they're gonna play off the fact that he's legitimately a plumber in New York. What is this place? And an Italian, I think. I don't really know what Chris Pratt's doing with his voice. I think that's what he's going for though. Do not touch that mushroom, you'll die! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Toadstool's spot on though. In fact, this whole movie trailer is fire. I am very excited for this. Huge fan of Nintendo and the games. Not so much Chris Pratt's Mario voice, but this is just a tease. Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. Unlike Tom Holland with Nathan Drake, who's under contract with Sony, and Sony's like, Tom Holland, he's a big deal. Let's put him in the movie, he's Nathan. I do think Chris Pratt had to audition for the role, and Nintendo really did go through this and say, yes, this works. We like him, we're going forward with it. The star power obviously helps, but I don't think that was the determining factor. At least that's what I'm telling myself so I can go to sleep at night, okay? Because an animated Mario Brothers movie being done correctly is paramount to me getting a good night's sleep. Because somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm still being tormented by scenes of giant Goombas dancing around in elevators, of a sassy, heavy-set gal in SMN gear, of a Fugly giant CG Bowser. That's the kind of stuff that sticks with you. It's hard to wash away. We get that nice colorful title followed by one final shot confirming that Luigi's in this. He's getting chased by a bunch of dry bones. Nice callback to Mario 3, I believe, is when we first saw dry bones appear. So first impressions are absolutely positive. I'm very excited for this movie. I think Nintendo and Illumination are gonna knock it out of the park. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video if you had a good time. Go ahead and punch that subscribe button. Hit that thing like you're breaking a brick. It's another Mario reference, subscribe. It's another Mario reference, hoo hoo. That way you won't miss a single scorching hot take in the future from me. They're out of this world. They're out of this Mario galaxy. Goodbye. Oh my God. Um, I tried a new way to stream today. It's, it's, I'm still a little disoriented from setting it up. I'm using YouTube, but also piggybacking off of Streamlabs. I wasn't expecting it to start. I've been all over the place. It's, it's been chaos. It's been complete pandemonium. I'm not fully ready for this yet. Let me get my Coke. I'm going to get my drink on. I'm going to get my taste on. I got to bring up some of my notes and stuff. Just, just hang tight. I'll be right back.
enjoy the the background accoutrements the setting i'm not looking at this camera i'm looking at a camera directly underneath the nicer one the stream camera is trash if this keeps going well I'll, I'll purchase a nicer camera but for right now this is what we have to work with you're just gonna have to bear with me on it thank you for joining the stream like i said i'll be right back got i gotta get something in me i gotta get something something in the mouth you can clip that if you want Hi. Does Berenstein bear with me for a sec? I got my Coke. I'm happy about that. Where, um, where's YouTube at? Where are you? It's just, I'm just missing, I'm missing a key ingredient that I need. Okay, okay. No, nope, no, nope, come back. I don't usually do double screens, so I got a giant TV hooked up to the computer and I'm just, I'm just trying with all my might right now to get this working properly. I thought I had a grasp on it, uh, but I don't. Show all windows, you stupid piece of shit. Unofficially brought to you by Coca-Cola Classics. I still haven't figured this out. I <clears throat> haven't figured it out. We'll get there. This is this. I used to stream on Twitch only because of this. Usually, it's uh, a good twenty percent tech support, technical issues, because I'm constantly changing things up, which is which is what you want to get. You want consistency. Hmm. Okay. I don't want this chair here. Let's get that out of the way.
Okay. <laughs> we got it. We got it. We turned the we turned the whole mirror nonsense off because it just was not playing well. It looks really dark on the stream. Is that just what I'm seeing or is it is it dark on your end? Let's light in this camera up. What what happened? Let's try that. We're going to bump the exposure up again. Two different cameras operating right now. see how the stream looks on YouTube because the preview I'm seeing is just terrible. It looks candlelit. Yeah, like a like a vigil. That looks better. Okay. Yeah, that that's better. Again, it's still just it's still terrible, but we're striving for mediocre here. Okay. So the goal today is we're going to live record a couple videos. How this works is I'm going to get into action mode. I'm going to hit record on this phone camera, iPhone 14 Pro, whatever, has, has much nicer picture quality than my Canon does now. And then I'm going to hit record separately on the audio, which is off camera on my computer. But I have a Yeti mic, just a, you know, $100 Yeti mic right out of frame. It's right, it's right here. It's what you're actually hearing me talk through right now. Camera separate, audio's the same. We got some lint or hair on here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, uh, if that all sounds good, what should we talk about first? I have on the docket, and I love, I love suge suggestions from the chat if there's anything spicy to talk about. Right now we're doing, we have the Mandalorian review. It's a spoiler review of season six, episode six, I believe. Season six, season three, episode six. I have notes. Uh, or I could do the Mario spoiler-free review. Perhaps we save the Mandalorian review for the end of the stream, or maybe I don't even do it on stream if you think that the spoilers are gonna be a problem. I'll let you have a couple minutes to digest that. And if you're playing this back later and not seeing it live, I can put chapters in so that you can avoid spoilers. Uh, spoiler, th there's nothing good about that episode. And the whole season's trash. So if you're still even watching it, you're not missing out on anything by missing the episode or by listening to the spoiler video. Hey Adam, what camera do you use? Well, I'm using my iPhone, iPhone 14 now. Uh, I was using a Canon like Rebel 7. It's, it's years old. It was never like top of the line when I got it. It was just kind of a entry uh, mid-level camera pretty much. Some say no spoilers, others want the Mando rant. Let's save the Mando rant for later in the night, maybe after the Q&A and everything, so people can dip out if they don't want to hear that and save it for later or for never, it doesn't matter to me. We'll do the Mario review, it will be very spoiler free, okay? Mm. Okay, we got the sips out of the way, throat's feeling okay. I just got done reading to my son. We're uh, going through Aragon, the first book. It's a fantastic book, but it's wordy. And I play the voices, I do the characters. It's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole production. What was the weird drink you had last time? Matt wants to know. Matt, who, uh, who Patreon user, he also is a friend at this point. He's gone to several movies with me. It's been a good time. So if anybody's in the South Carolina area, all you have to do is ask. I'll see movies with, with pretty much anyone. 
Okay, we're going to do Mario. Let me get IMDB up so that I can remember the names of all the people in it and say the ones that I want to and avoid the ones that I will butcher regardless. Let's see. <laughs> Mario Brothers IMDB. Okay, we're good to go. I'm going to hit record and I'm going to hit record on the audio. So for the for a little bit of time, I'm going to ignore the chat. I'm going to fuck my way through this review. There's going to be a lot of errors. I just quickly kind of take where I left off from. You can make comments about how, how awful it is. It's okay. It's part of the process. And then you'll see just how much editing I have to do to Humpty Dumpty this review together. <laughs> Believe it or not, after so many years, I've not gotten any better at this. <laughs> All right. File, new audio recording. Sling. Yeti is, oh God, there's multiple versions right now. Let's Hello. It's this one. It's got to be that one. What happens if I choose this one? Testing. It does the same thing. It's got to be coming from there, right? It sounds like it's coming from there every time I punch it. That's got to sound good on your end. Oh my God, Matt, I don't even think I answered your question. The, the weird drink I had last time was apple juice. That little orb, the sphere was filled with apple juice. We have a whole, uh, we have a Bangladesh of them in the fridge outside. I know Bangladesh isn't used properly there. That's a place, not a, not a term. But sometimes I just say stuff like that for fun. Okay. One last hi, and then I'm going to start the, the video, screw my way through it, and then we'll chat again afterwards. <clears throat> Mario review, no spoilers. Hitting record on the real camera. It's recording. It's been a long time since the cinematic masterpiece Super Mario Brothers hit theaters in the 90s. Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, America's sweethearts put on the big screen as plumbers fighting Bowser and saving Princess Daisy, I think. Uh, listen, that movie was a complete disaster. This was Nintendo's opportunity, along with Illumination, to set things right in 2023 with the Super Mario Brothers movie. How does it fare? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Stick around, I'll tell you. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Okay, I think we got through that pretty okay. All right. <clears throat> when the trailers first hit, I think everybody was pleasantly surprised with what they saw unfold on the big screen or on the small screen, depending on what screen you watch that trailer from. Probably a small screen. The thing that stood out as a negative, as a, as a hair in the ointment, that's an expression I just came up with, is Chris Pratt's voice. He does a good job in certain roles, certain roles, eh, he just kind of does this, and, and that's really all it takes. Owen, dinosaurs. I was actually impressed. I shouldn't say impressed, I should say it was fine. It wasn't scorched earth bad, it makes sense in the movie, and the movie itself is a little better than fine as well. It's not the greatest thing, you know, it's not the be-all, end-all. Certainly better than that last Mario movie, although that bar was in the ground. Let's talk a little bit more about it without going into... Sp I'm going to jump into it without getting any spo... I'm going <clears> to... 
I'm gonna make like there's a fictitious block above my head and jump into this review without giving any spoilers away. I do wanna ask you though, if you could grab a wrench and just smash on that subscribe button for me, that would be great. As I post tons of movie content each and every week, gotta have you stick around. I think I said wake, but we're gonna keep moving past it. We have a cavalcade of characters here from Luigi to Mario to Peach to Bowser to Donkey Kong. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of people showing up in this thing, and the voices are equally as impressive. Not only do we have Pratt, but we have Charlie Day from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. We have Anya Taylor-Joy, or however you say her name. She's Peach. We have Seth... I was going to say Seth Rogen. <laughs> that would be awesome. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. <laughs> oh, God. What, what is his name? Seth... I forgot his name. Seth something, right? Keegan-Michael Key, is is he just a voice in everything now? I swear I see his name show up more than anyone else. Seth Rogen. Did I say Seth Rogen? I did say Seth Rogen. In my mind, I was thinking Joe Rogen would be funny as Donkey Kong. It was Seth Rogen. Now I have no idea where I took that from. Seth Rogen voicing Donkey Kong. Keegan-Michael Key, because of course, he's somehow in every single animated movie doing a voice. It could be a sunflower, it could be a boulder in the background. Keegan-Michael Key's in the picture. He's getting paid regardless. The big standout, though, is of course Jack Black as Bowser. He stole the show in the trailers. He steals the final product as well. Although, Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach... Pretty solid as well. I have to say, I saw the negatives on Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't read them. I just saw the percentage, 48% at the time. Critics are, I guess, not liking this. And I'm just trying to figure out why. Part of me thinks it's Illumination, so they're already having a big stick up their ass about that. But I'm kind of okay with Illumination. It's family friendly. It's surface level. It's nothing deep, okay? Typically fart jokes. Thankfully, none here. They, they shied away from that. They shy guide away from that, if you will. What it does have, though, is a fast hour and a half runtime. Solid storyline. It's a little all over the place at times, and they definitely rush through it very quickly. But it gets the playbook in check. You have all the X's and all the O's in place. Mario's a plumber. He goes to this magical world, Mushroom Kingdom. He meets the princess. He's got to save the day. It's not like the video game's complex there. All right? An all ages affair. Your kid's going to love it. Your 90-year-old grandma's going to love it as long as she can get off her ass and go to the theater. Otherwise, she'll wait for it to come home. Check it out in the peacock. Check it out in the cock, as I like to say. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> we did pretty well there. We, we ran hot and hot and heavy for a while. I think maybe some people just were rubbed the wrong way by Chris Pratt initially announced or just the fact that he exists at this point. I don't know. The, the, people are crazy. People are crazy all over. They get a chip on their shoulder about someone that they heard something about and they're just like, we're done with you. We're scorched earth in this. Pratt's fine. Pratt's perfectly fine. There's a lot of nostalgia in this thing. It's heavy on gamer nostalgia. If you haven't played the games for some reason, if you've never played a single Mario game, you're still going to be fine. There's plenty to enjoy. It's a visual feast. We know what Illumination movies look like. This is easily the best. And I know they're not known for their upper echelon top pedigree of, of visuals, but this is pretty damn nice looking. It's also action-packed. You get Mario Kart references. It's in the trailer. That's not a spoiler. You get power-ups. You get a lot of things branching a ton of decades of video gaming. There's Mario history from 1, 2, 3, all the way up to Odyssey. And I'm here for it. I've played a large amount of these games. So every little detail, every little Easter egg, not only from the Mario world, but also from other games from the past, was very fun to see. Absolutely a great time. I took my two kids they had a blast, and they don't have that nostalgia like I do. They've played some of the newer stuff. I think they've played Mario 1 a few times, dabbled in Mario 3, tried out that Tanuki suit, took it for a spin, jumped on a couple dry bones and called it a day. They love this movie as well. I don't think either of them thought, wow, this was the greatest thing ever. We need to go again. 
I don't think anybody will think that, but it is a very entertaining, easy watch in and out an hour and a half. That's really all I have. Oh, and the music. The music is probably the greatest thing ever. You have so many musical chime-ins from different walks of life. All these different games culminate into a ballad of beautiful orchestrative numbers. Orchestral numbers, I always do that. They culminate into a beautiful orchestra. <laughs> God damn it. All these old numbers culminate into a beautiful. I'm dumb. That's just what it is. I'm dumb. I pretend like I have some sort of intelligent, but I'm, I'm a complete idiot. Orchestral. All these beautiful, wonderful songs culminate into a amazing orchestral <laughs> God, why? 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 Just figure it out, Adam. God, I need a haircut too. I have like a, I don't know what's going on here. Orchestral. All of this culminates into a beautiful orchestral magical experience for the whole family. It's a feast for the eyes. It's a feast for the ears. And uh, I was hungry going in. I left pretty satisfied coming out. I think that was a good analogy. I'm okay with it. Let me know what you thought. If you saw Mario already, I can't jump into that already. I feel like there's got to be something else to say here. Oh, the, the end credits. Not going to spoil. You may have heard, if you've been on the internet, that there are two end credit scenes. Not going to tell you what they are. I will just tell you. If you got better things to do, do them. Neither one of them is at all worth sitting around for. One's just played for jokes. Another one... Slight tease. Neither tickled my fancy, as they say. Well, there you have it, my... Well, there you have it, my thoughts on Mario... Well, there you have it, my thoughts on Super Mario Kart. Well, there you have it, my thoughts on the Super Mario movie. It's better than the last one, and it's not a bad time. I'm excited for more in this franchise. We're definitely going to get it. This movie's already making a ton of money. It's already made more than Shazam and Morbius combined. Not that that's saying much, but still, very fun. Like I said, I post tons of movie content every week. I'd love for you to jump in a cart, drift your ass up to that subscribe button, just hit that thing, subscribe, like the video if you had some fun. Let's go to that notification bell. Turn that bad boy on so these things populate in your feed. Otherwise, the videos are going to be full of uh, Joe Rogan being Donkey Kong. And we, we just can't have that. All right. Thanks for watching the video. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Hopefully, I see you next time. It's got to be a better way to sign off. All right, thanks for what? All right, thanks again for watching. Let's head on over to the game over. Head on over. All right, thanks for watching. Let's head to the game over screen. Okay, and that's the end. That's the end of video number one. We did it in eleven minutes and five seconds. I'm gonna stop the recording. I'm going to stop the recording. Save Mario movie review. Let's see if anyone is still in the chat watching. <laughs> Joe Rogan, Yoshi, pull that up. What does he always say? You ever you ever tried DMT or what? I don't even know the term. Whatever drugs he's into. I could see Donkey Kong being entirely like that. Just a total gym bro who's high constantly. Uh, Matt, I said Joe Rogan the second time on purpose. That, that, that was playing into the previous joke. It went full circle jerk.
I was going to say, what are they going to make next? Angry Birds, but there's already two of those movies. We had two Angry Birds movies before a, a second version of Mario was made. That's insane. Frozen in the 80s with a $5 super chat. Just shout out of a cannon. Amazing. Thank you. Appreciate that. We are going to, I should point out, Frozen in the 80s. I'll, I'll let, if you stick around for a while, um, we do a Q&A at the end. I did it last time. I'll do it again. If you want to give a super, you don't have to give one. You already gave one. But you can ask me a question since you gave a super chat already. At the Q&A, I do like super chat any, any amount Ask me a question, I'll answer. Within reason. I mean, there's not really much of a reason. Give me one reason to stay here and I turn back around. Remember that song? The Tracy, Tracy Chapman? That can't be right. Anyway, um, okay, I was going to do the Mando thing, but I feel bad because the episode just came out today. So I'm going to wait until like the way in. So in the meantime, in the interim, is there any movie news you want me to cover? Let me know in the chat. Chat it up. If there's any movie news you want me to cover, I'll look it over and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. We'll record it. We'll make it a thing. How does it compare to the first Sonic movie? Sounds like a Movie Feuds episode I would have done back in the day, King Cold. Uh, I think it's far better than the first Sonic movie. The first Sonic movie is just a competently made family film with like a little bit of Sonic nostalgia and gameplay loops put in. Mario is a, a, a video game fever dream. There, there is stuff everywhere. It fully goes all in on the Mario verse, and I'm, I'm here for it. Chris Pratt signed to voice Mickey Mouse for Disney. Rob K, there's no way that's real. I, I refuse to believe that, but that's funny. Oh, ha, ha, hi, I'm Chris Pratt. Ha, ha. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, ha, ha, I'm Chris Pratt. Ha, ha. Let's go. He, he like combines both of them. Moana remake. That's just sad. That's how you know that people either A, aren't clicking that notification bell or B, YouTube is still suppressing videos because I already did the Moana remake video. That was posted yesterday. I dropped two videos yesterday. The Moana thing and a Blue Beetle trailer reaction. I think I did three things yet. Might've done three things yesterday. I don't know, it was a, it was a hot and heavy day. Ooh, talk possible spin-off ideas for Mario. Or I could do like a top five Nintendo movies I want to see. That would be cool. <laughs> Harry Potter, that was, the, yes, that was the other one I did. I did a Harry Potter. Thank you. Thank you, Bubba. Yeah, maybe I'll do a maybe I'll do a, a Mario like thing I want to see in the future. Let me let me put down my my top five quick yeah i'm gonna put down the top five here really fast okay i have three i need two more Trying to think of Nintendo first party things that I like. I got Pokemon. I got Zelda. I got Metroid. What 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 are the other big ones? Star Fox, I don't care about. Punch Out, no. God, there's like a million Nintendo games. Why can't I think of anything else that's like I need to go upstairs and look at my collection?
Yeah, I could do a Barbie reaction to that trailer. They made a Pokemon movie already. They did not make a Pokemon movie. They made a Detective Pikachu movie. And a bunch of animated... Po I'm talking about like in the same vein. Like if Illumination's taking over the Nintendoverse... I want animation the same style as Mario for these other properties. And then we can get a Smash Brothers movie. Smash Brothers. That's what I need. Smash Brothers. <laughs> Banjo Kazooie. That is not a Nintendo property. Don't try to throw me off. I know video games. I could do an Adam Does Video Games channel and and be equally as mildly successful in three years' time. But I just don't have the time. But I know video games. And Conquer is Bad for a Day. That's uh that was rare, and now it's owned by Microsoft, I believe. Or it's sitting in some sort of a limbo hell. Yeah, I got Smash Brothers. So I got Smash Brothers, Pokemon, Zelda, Metroid. I got I got to have one more. Who else is big in freaking What is that stupid uh Fire Emblem? I don't give a shit about Fire Emblem, but half of the roster's Fire Emblem characters in Smash Brothers. Yeah, Luigi's Mansion would be good. I mean, a, a, a true Mario Kart movie would be awesome as well. But again, we have to kind of build up a roster of solo films first before we get to that Avengers-esque big showdown. And then by the time, so like in 30 years from now, Nintendo will be on their like C-Squad like the MCU is. We're going to have like a Mr. Game & Watch movie. It'll just be the bottom of the barrel for the movie's... Uh, Mario will be dead. He will have sacrificed himself. Yeah. Let me Google Smash Brothers and see what else. Smash Brothers roster. I know there's a bunch of third party shit in there too. God, maybe we do Star Fox. Star Fox, Star Fox could be sweet. I'm going to throw Star Fox in there as the wild card. I mean, a Donkey Kong movie, obviously, he's he's kind of, it's kind of like built up in Mario, but uh, yeah, obviously a Donkey Kong standalone. He's kind of the Hulk character, though. He's already kind of introduced. We're good with him. I feel like Kirby could just be kind of shoehorned into the Pokemon movie. <laughs> just just kind of like retcon him as a Pokemon at this point. He's like a Pokemon 2.0 or something. All right, we're going to do that. We're going to do this. Uh, I like this idea. New audio recording. Start starting the video. Take one more drink of soda. With the inevitable massive success of the Super Mario Brothers movie, Illumination has a gold. Let's try that again. With the inevitable success of the Mario... We're off to a good start. With the inevitable 
With the inevitable amazing success of the Super Mario Brothers movie, Nintendo and Illumination have a golden ticket on their hands and they're not going to squander it. Today I'm going to present to you five movies I'd like to see coming next in this Nintendo cinematic universe. The only other cinematic universe that can possibly hold a candle to the MCU in the coming years. That's not fair. DCU might have a chance. Eh, let's, let's keep going. Yeah, right out of the gates, I just pissed a bunch of people off. That's not a good way to start, is it? Probably shouldn't do that. We'll try one more. Try one more take. We'll see which one sticks. We'll see which one fits better. With the inevitable amazing success of the Super Mario Brothers movie, Nintendo and Illumination, they have a golden ticket on their hand. One that they are surely not going to squander. So today I present five movies that I want to see next in this Nintendo Cinematic Universe, the NCU, if you will. That sounds like some sort of a uh, NCI spin-off. Anyway, let's continue with this video right now. <laughs> God, what a shit show. <laughs> Take it from NCU. I, I, there was a break there. Introductions out of the way. Let's begin. We're making this a numbered list just for no reason at all. We're going to make this a numbered list because that's just what you do on YouTube. So in the number of five, we're going to make this a numbered list out of five because that's just what you do on YouTube. So in the five slot, I have Star Fox, not because I want it or need it, but because it just has to happen. We have to build out the roster. I'm not totally craving a Star Fox film, although... If these are all, in my mind, presented by Illumination, they all follow a similar art style, then I want this to be the first one out of the gates that says, okay, we're going a different direction than Mario. We're taking to the sky. We got talking animals. It's crazy. It fits, though. We already got a talking gorilla. Is, is talk we, have, we already have a talking ape with Donkey Kong, so we're slowly leading into the animal critter stuff. It might get sloppy with a pick I have down the road, but we'll address that later. For now, I want to see Skippy. I want to see that dumbass toad flying around, needing saving. I got to have Fox behind the pilot chair doing his thing. Barrel rolling out of danger, blowing stuff up, taking to the skies, taking to the water, taking to the land. I want transforming vehicles. I want some amazing action set pieces in this thing. I want Nintendo go all... I want Nintendo to do what I want Nintendo to do what they Nintendo don't do for the Star Fox property and make something good again. Remember, do you remember the good old days when Star Fox was awesome way back on the Nintendo 64? Sure, you can say that that weird spin-off RPG style game was good. It originally was Dino Planet or something. It wasn't even a Star Fox game. It did give us Crystal. It did give the furries what they needed in their community, but I need more. I need high octane adventure and Nintendo and Illumination can do it. And it's going to get us on the right path to a Avenger style showdown in the future. <clears throat> in the number four spot, we got Samus Aran. We got Metroid. This is going to be a darker, sinister film taking place in the cold reaches of outer space, traversing different planets. Samus Aran, naturally voiced by the beautiful, sultry, silky smooth voice of Scarlett Johansson. It has to happen. It has to happen. I also wouldn't mind if they modeled the character off of her either, but that's for another, that's for another video altogether. In this, I wanna see Samus alien style going around icy terrain, going through a volcanic area, taking on some of her greatest foes, some of her greatest adversar adversaries. What's the big bird, what's the bird thing's name? There's mother brain. What's the freaking, what's the freaking dinosaur name? Metroid enemy. Ridley, Ridley, oh my God. It ba Ridley, it was right there with Alien, with Ripley, Ridley, Scott, Ripley, whatever. <laughs> big, big bird. <laughs> it 
big bird thing. You know Ridley's in the mix, but he's not going to show himself right away. He's going to skulk in the distance. <laughs> swarming or swarming. Swarming or swarming. Why? Why is he swarming? Ominously in the shadows, in the distance, waiting to strike. This is going to be a character that's going to get teased several times before the big reveal towards the final fight, which is going to be with Mother Brain. So she's going to have two two opponents to take out at once. Her blaster is going to keep getting upgrades as this thing goes from a little pea shooter to a transforming behemoth. It's going to be epic. And the last and the last and final thing that we are all craving more than anything else in Hollywood is a good old fashioned strong female lead. And quite frankly, it's about time. <laughs> oh, I'm sweating bullets. I'm sweating bullets, Megadeth. <clears throat> Let me Bob Ross this bitch. Get my canvas, get my paintbrush, and draw you something up really quick. Samus Aran. Weathered. Disheveled. Half her armor is gone. Zero suit teasing underneath. Again, in that Samus figure. What is wrong with me today? Melt down. Blood dripping. Illumination art style. So, little little cutesy still, I guess. But we can try to adult it a little bit more. Volcano, volcano, <laughs> volcano. This is how I talk now. El Canto, volcano about to, no. Volcano erupting in the, I already said distance. Volcano on the horizon, blowing its load. <laughs> Audience is blowing their load too because this is where the film is gonna hit its final crescendo. She starts to rise up, ash sprinkling from the heavens above singeing her armor kss, kss. hair half out of the helmet she sees ridley woof, 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 woof. Kish, come down looks over this way baby metroids coming towards her she starts to load the shooter Music is epic. It's sick. It's ep sick. She is going nuts. Drops into her ball. Sonic's the hell out of there. Jumping in and out of crevasses. Swinging around. It is insanity. It's Metroid. It's the film I want. It has to be made. Music has some opera style stuff going on. I need it now. Inject it right into my veins, Nintendo. How is Metroid only in a number four slot? I'm devastated. Well, I'm kind of starting to second guess that too. <laughs> okay. In the number three spot. Da skin da da da. No. You got the song wrong. In the number three spot. We're talking Zelda. We're talking Zelda. And I'm going to get a little controversial here. 
I'm actually going to pick a lane. I am going to pinpoint the game I want. Some of you are going to drop the mouth. A gap. Aghast. <sighs> Zelda Wind Waker! I need it! Zelda Wind Waker, baby! Give it to me yesterday. I want to be traveling the high seas with Link, with the wind wand, Ski -dee 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 -dee. opening chess, hovering on a leaf. The art style fits perfectly with illumination. It could even do a little bit of the cell shading if it wants to. <clears throat> it has one of the most interesting stories. A princess in disguise, a Hyrule underwater, lost to the ages, and one of the most epic final duels with Ganon, a.k.a. Ganondorf, a.k.a. one of the coolest villains in video game history, where Link grabs the sword, runs up the fucker, and <laughs> implants the thing into his head. Right into the skull. As Zelda looks on, reflecting glad. As Zelda helps up from the sidelines, reflecting light off a shield. It's amazing. It, it, it truly is a game for the ages. And it's a game I want to see brought to the big screen. Listen, I know Link's a kid throughout the whole thing. But that just lets it grow, right? That gives us the opportunity to see him grow up as a character. Become a teen. Become a man. But we have to start at ground one. We got to start at Wind Waker. <clears throat> Illumination can have fun with this too, of course. We'll see him go into houses, just break in, <laughs> start shattering glasses, start shattering bases, <laughs> grabbing rupees, <laughs> taking everything and just looting the place, ransacking and getting the hell out of there. It's, it, it's Zelda at its peak. We'll have dungeon sections. We will have combat with the Master Sword. Can you imagine? Can you imagine him going into the woods? <laughs> Kills Tingle, naturally. Decaps that guy. Can't stand Tingle. Can't stand him. That's a personal thing. We can't put that in a kid's movie, I understand. Axe Tingle, I don't want him in there. Toss him asunder. We're going to have giant octopus boss battles in the film. He's going to take out an octopus while he's on the seas. Okay, little Pirates of the Caribbean mixed in with my Link adventure. I'm fine with it. Giant birds. Bad guys where he has to use a hook shot. He grabs new weapons as the film progresses. It's, it's, it's a perfect, perfect experience for the whole family. Keep it easy. Keep it breezy. Hour 30, hour 45, in and out. We have a picture here. <clears throat> Let's look at the comments. Or <laughs> yourself up into a heart attack. <laughs> Wind Waker for Illumination, but Ocarina of Time for Peter Jackson. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Ocarina, that's the untouchable one. That's the one everybody goes to. That's the one. All right, two more Nintendo movies. It's just going to keep ratcheting up here. You like how the only voice actor I've given so far is Scarlett Johansson? I should add her into all of these movies somehow, make her voice different characters. Ash Ketchum and Misty, both played by Scarlett Johansson. Sure hope I was recording audio during that. Okay. Woo. Woo <clears throat> In the number two spot, you gotta catch it. No, what, what, what the fuck does that mean? In the number, you gotta catch. It. 
In the number two spot, I got an option so controversial, it's gonna make your head spin right off of your body. Onto the floor. You can pick it up or you can save it there because it's gonna continue to be dropped. The knowledge I'm gonna throw at you today is gonna be, what the fuck am I talking about? I can't even get through this. Sometimes, sometimes I just start and hope that my words will lead somewhere. Oftentimes that's not the case. Oftentimes that's not the case. Let's try again. I want to be the very best that no one ever was. Pokemon movie. It has to happen. And no, not Detective Pikachu. Are you out of your fucking mind with that? It's trash. People just pretend to like it because they love Pokemon. And I know there's a bunch of animated Pokemon movies, okay? Mid at best. I said it. I stand by it. And I saw some of them in theaters. Day fun. What I want is an Illumination Pokemon movie. No, I don't want them farting on each other and then, you know, swallowing the farts and throwing up and then another one throws up from the throw up. No, I don't want juvenile humor, okay? But I want the Squirtle Squad. I want cute Charmander. I want an amazing relationship with two best friends traveling the, the countryside, Ash Ketchum and Pikachu. Yeah. I know they retired Ash Ketchum. I'm taking him out of retirement already. Dusting off the cap. Is he a dumbass? Yeah, of course. Has he not grown really at all over the course of 20 or so seasons? Absolutely. We're taking him back to square one. We're going to rebuild this character the right way. Because the, the pieces are all there. Young kid. Rebellious. Wants to make a life of his own at the age of like 10 or 11. <laughs> the time that you leave home, of course. Gets his first Pokemon. Has this amazing bond with Pikachu. I mean, the, the, really the movie should be the rise of Ketchum and Pikachu as they start their journey and head to the Master League. Do we end with the Master League? I don't even know if we go there. I think it's premature. If we're building a franchise, let's build it properly. Master League, that's the be-all end-all, right? Becoming an Elite Four? That's the end game. We don't start at the end game. We stop there. So we start with just a simple buddy road trip adventure between these two heroes. Yeah, we bring Misty in, of course, voiced by Scarlett Johansson. We bring in Brock. Who plays Brock? We got to have a voice for Brock. Seriously, though, Misty's probably voiced by like Anna Kendrick or some. Seriously, Misty's voiced by like Anna Kendricks or something. We, we, we keep it. We keep it familiar and annoying enough to work. Anna Kendrick's fine, but she, she can play that role. Uh, Brock, we got to go with like John Cena or someone. Brock is the man. So we get a man to play him. Nurse Joy is obviously in the film. Officer Jenny's obviously in the film. We got a, we got, got a formula. We got to stick with what works. Team Rocket, you better believe Team Rocket's there. We have all the pieces, people. This is a slam dunk of a film. Ash Ketchum and Pikachu on their journey. He runs into the Squirtle Squad. He gets a Charmander. Maybe sees an epic Pokemon. I don't want Mewtwo in this thing. Okay, I'm going to say that right now. Mewtwo's out. He's overplayed. He's not that interesting. And all he does is monologue to no end. I want him out of the thing. Okay? You save him maybe later down the road when we get to the Smash Brothers universe. And I guess I blew my load early because we're going to the number one. And that's a Smash Brothers movie. We all knew it was going to be here, right? We all knew this was going to be the end game. We've established... Oh, I forgot to say the word. <laughs> We've established some key characters already. We have Mario. We have Donkey Kong from the Mario movie. He's a piggyback character, a la Hulk. Yes, Hulk did have his own film, but it's kind of like an ugly stepbrother of the MCU. It's part of it, but eh, is it? Is it? We have two established characters, Donkey Kong. We got Diddy Kong in the mix. You can easily bring in more of these guys. But, oh my God, do we have a commercial break? <laughs> Did YouTube just throw a commercial out? Let me know if there's a commercial.
Okay, I don't I don't know what happened. I saw a commercial go up, but we're we're, we're past it now. <clears throat> Where was I? <clears throat> so we got two key so we have two key ingredients right out of the gates. We have a Metroid film, so we got Samus in there. We have <clears throat> what else do we do? We got a whole slew of Pokemon with Ash Ketchum, Brock, and Misty all coming together for this one. A nice family reunion. And we got Link. National treasure. Link himself. So we have a picture here, folks. Who are we going to add on, though? Who is the catalyst? Who is the person that brings this team together? Who's our Nick Fury of this Smash Brothers universe? I don't want Master Hand as the villain. We're walking away from Master Hand. The whole child play toy thing that they initially conjured up in the first Smash Brothers for the 64, it works. Nobody cares. We're making a movie now, though. I don't want giant white Mickey Mouse gloves attacking these guys. That's not threatening no matter how they play it out in the games. No matter what they wrap those gloves in, they're still Mickey. Oh, oh, oh hi, guys. Oh, you're going to die, motherfucker. <laughs> no, not happening. The villain's probably a combination of Bowser and Ganon coming together. We save a bigger threat for later down the road. Okay, we don't need to figure that out right now. We're just trying to get through this first phase. We got Ganon, we got Bowser coming together, teaming up. It's going to be Bedlam. It's going to be crazy. Dead's rising. We got Koopa Troopas all over. We got Koopa Troopas all over this bitch. And you know what else? We're going to introduce Kirby. Kirby's going to fly in on a star. He's going to smash down from another planet. He's going to help these guys out. He doesn't talk because we got to keep him cute. He's borderline a Pokemon already, so we're not really, it's not a bridge that far away from here. <clears throat> we got to put some cameos in here too. Not going to be big ones. They're just going to be little throwaway shots. Um, maybe while disaster is happening, we see how it's affecting others around the globe. Maybe around, may, I don't think we take this universe levels. This is just an earth problem or I guess whatever, you know, mushroom kingdom is an earth. So yeah, it's an earth problem. We maybe see the ice climbers on their way up a mountain peak when some rumblings happen thanks to whatever's go whatever shenanigans is going on so they're like ah, ah, and that's it that's it one shot of the ice climbers done maybe uh uh the stupid dogs laughing and because of what's going on there's an earthquake and he falls and dies and then all the ducks shit on his corpse and fly away i'd love to see that that smug prick sorry that's a, a personal hang up we got Star Fox and the crew. We already established that very early on. They're going to be in the mix. It's just, it's just such an easy win here. Nintendo really is the Disney of video games. I've said this. Many people have said this. It's not hard to see why. Now they already have a theme park at Universal. It's all happening finally. What we saw back in the NES, SNES, 64 days, it's finally coming to fruition. And I'm happy to be here. And those are my picks. There's a lot more we can go with. There's Earthbound. There's Pikmin. There's, uh, I guess, more modern stuff would be uh, whatever that Squid Game is that people like. Not Squid Billies. That was a show. Squid Kids is nothing. Um, <laughs> what is that? What is that? They made like three games. Splatoon. Maybe the Splatoon, maybe those Splatoon octopus things come into the later movies. It doesn't matter. At that point, we're already making money. We're already having a good time. Those are my picks, though. I think we need to start with a nice foundation. This provides us. This provides us with a lot. And most of them take place on Earth. We got some spit. And most of it takes place in a and most of it takes place in this fictitious earth that we've created with pallet towns and orange islands and mushroom kingdoms. So it's all kind of enclosed there with an occasional space ranger flying in and out in the mix. I want to hear from you though. You like this play? You like this setup? Let me know in the comments. Like this video if you had a good time. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews each and every week. Love to have you stick around. With that. And with that, I prepare my next Nintendo list for Phase 2, 3, and beyond. Take care. Whew. That was a long one. 25-minute recording sesh.
File, save, Nintendo top five movies. Okay, um, it's 11.07. We've been going for an hour. I have to do a Mandalorian spoiler review, which will take like 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. So why don't we do, we already knocked out two videos for maybe this week, next week, something like that. What is it today? Wednesday? Tomorrow I'll post the Mario review. Friday, I'll probably see a movie tomorrow night. I don't know what else is out. I know there's some other stuff coming out besides Mario. <clears throat> But regardless, we got two out. We're going to get Mando out. So for right now, if there's any super chat questions you want, this will be a nice break before I go into the Mando spoiler. Any price range, $1, $10 super chats, have them. I'll answer your questions. We'll move on. I'll let, I'll let you have a few minutes to decide. <laughs> Hair is just getting... If you want to know when I'm getting a haircut, that's a good question. Look at, I'm sweating. I've got sweat under here. Uh, it's hot under these lights, Seinfeld. And I know Frozen in the 80s gave me a super chat earlier. So if he had a question he wants answered, just, just let me know. Yes, Maiden, that's exactly right. No, there's no, there's no AC running. There's actually a hilarious scene in um, Babylon. That's the movie, right? Babylon? God, what a terrible title for that. Um, where they're recording like old school Hollywood style and the AC so loud they have to keep it off and it has to be soundless in the entire room. It's so freaking funny. It's like a 20 minute sequence that's funnier than any comedy I've seen in the last decade. Edward with a uh, Edward with a uh, Ace Ventura 2 reference. Very nice. Very beautiful. I'm bringing up my notes for Mandalorian. Hang on. Okay, Mandalorian, this is going to be spoilers. Not that anything of real s consequence happens. But uh, yeah, Tre tread lightly. We're hitting record. Skling! Oh, I have plenty of water. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We're almost done. We're just doing one more video. I genuinely, I, I watch these episodes of Mandalorian. I, I genuinely forget what they're about as soon as they're done. Recording, recording. 
I'm back again to talk about another episode of The Mandalorian, this time the sixth episode of season three. Spoilers aplenty, the biggest one being, this show still sucks. Let's begin. If you're liking The Mandalorian Season 3, I don't have any... <laughs> if you're liking The Mandalorian Season 3, there's no accounting for good taste or bad. You should walk away from this video. It's going to be negative. Um, I have a chip on my shoulder. I am hate watching this show. So it's kind of just a way for me to burn off some of the rage and anger I experience on a week-to-week -week basis. Could I walk away? Absolutely. But I watched every season of Lost because I hate myself. So I'm going to force watch Mandalorian sit there upset because a once great show has been completely burned to the ground at this point. Season 3 episode 6 is a trash heap. There's really nothing good in it. And we're going to break down the episode as a whole. I took notes because I, I, I honestly watched this show now and don't retain a single thing about it afterwards because it's so nonsensical. Nothing really makes sense at all, is what I'm saying. Uh, there's story beats, of course. They don't function the way a normal show does. There will be plot points resolved in completely different shows. Like, Mandalorian cliffhangers from Season 2 are done in Boba Fett. There will be episodes of both series with different characters in the lead. And I want to say... For instance, the book of Boba Fett started out as a book about... <laughs> a book. For instance, the Book of Boba Fett started out as a show about the titular character, Boba Fett. But by the time it was done, it was about Mandalorian. And about the cool female side character of Boba Fett. Now here we are with the Mandalorian, and the same thing's happening. He's a shell of his former self, which really was kind of a shell to begin with, because he never takes his helmet off, so he's really not much of a character. Baby Yoda, Grogu, or Gragu, terrible name now completely played for merchandise, has zero purpose on the show, somehow has become more like a baby than ever before. Complete with little like meh, 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 meh noises. Constantly flipping around like a dumbass. I can't stand it. I hate this thing now and I used to love it. I used to want to collect the little little dolls and stuff. This, this set was about two minutes away from becoming a complete collection of baby Grogu shit. No, I'm joking. No, it I wasn't that bad. <laughs> Regardless, the show is. The show's very bad now. Oh, and my point that I was eventually going to get to is it's about Boca. Oh, and the point I was eventually going to get to is it's about Boca Tan. It's very much her show now, and she's about the only good character on it. They've made sure of it. Let's start things out, though, with a nice. Romeo and Juliet-esque space intro, I guess is what you would say. We open this episode with a fish... We open this episode... We open this episode with a space fish called Wanda hanging out on a ship on a cruiser and she's in some sort of a back... What are those things called? I wrote it down. Bacta. And she's just kind of lounging in one of those fish Bacta tanks. She even eats a fish at one point, kind of a celebratory snack. The thing releases itself. She's on a throne. And, uh-oh, someone comes on the comm. It's a bunch of rogue Mandalorians. It's Bo-Katan's old crew. They're now rogue. They're now freelancing. Doesn't matter if it's a good guy or a bad guy paying. They just want that cash money. Ain't nothing funny about what they're doing here, though. They want to, uh, what do they want to do? Okay. They have to recover a stowaway. They have, they're here to recover a stowaway. I don't know. They're here to recover a stowaway. At first, the captain pushes back this uh, Davy Jones daughter sort of character. She's like, uh, I don't have him. I don't have him. And then he comes running in. Very bizarre scene because she seems very motherly and he seems like a teenager. So you have this bizarre fish romance, a fish mance. And it ends before it begins, thankfully. And then the title comes up and we don't have to go back to that ever again because it kind of disturbed me. After the intro love affair, or I guess fish affair would be more appropriate, we're back with Bo-Katan, 
little Grogu or Gragu. I never say his name right. I don't care to look it up. And Din Djarin himself. This is great how it's framed up. Um, we, we really do a good job now of showcasing what a pathetic idiot the Mandalorian is. We have Bo-Katan, front and center. We got Boca, front and center, flying the craft. The spaceship, by the way, is much more plausible than the stupid thing that we have Din Djarin flying in. The one-seater with the baby red shirts. Just kind of fiddling with things. At one point, he puts his finger up on what is clearly a sticker. Like he's going to do something, but nothing happens at all. It's not touch screen. It's just, it's just like a sticker. He's like... Uh. In all honesty, Bo-Katan probably put him there for Mandalorian to just kind of play with, like a kid in the corner. It's just, this is just, these are the framing devices I look at and I just think, why? Who is this cool? It's a freaking TV series. When you're making a series or a movie in a fantasy world, make your characters cool. They have, they have the technology. They have the cameras. They have the directors. You can say, okay, we're going to open the shot. Bo-Katan's cool. She's got her leg up. She's flying the craft. Maybe Manda's just chilling in the back. Sharpening his blade. Working on his guns. Something manly. Something, something baller. Instead, no. He's like off in the corner like a receptionist. I was expecting him to start taking orders. Or filling prescriptions. This is Bo-Katan's office. Din Djarin speaking. How can I help you? Uh-huh. Okay, sweetie. I'll get right on that. He's got the long fingernails. Okay, goodbye. I'll patch you through now. It's pathetic. They're heading down to Fantasy Planet to go see the other Mandalorians. The, the fallouts that we saw at the beginning, the intro of this episode. Because Bo-Katan now, helmetless, because she's a daywalker like Blade... She's both Mandalorian and Rogue Mandalorian. She can walk between both worlds. She's like Edward from Twilight. She sparkles. She shines. She's beautiful. And I love, I love Kate Sackhoff. She, she is absolutely stunning on the eyes. Every time she saunters in, I'm just, I'm just all in with that. Um, Din Djarin's an idiot. He's, he's just a shell of a man now. They're in this little shuttle that they're forced into by this mysterious new ownership going on on the planet. They're taken down. And the doors open to what looks like something out of a bad Willy Wonka knockoff. This, this little room with the tables and the aliens doing drugs. It's very surreal. And off in the corner of what appears to now be a Saturday Night Live skit is Jack Black and Lizzo. Jack Black and Lizzo are in this. Because of course they are. We had Tim Meadows in the last episode. People are just all over, just coming and going. There is no structure or tone to this. The first season was like a Wild West Star Wars thing. Din Djarin was this cool, badass bounty hunter. He made, he made Boba Fett look like an idiot. It was awesome. Now we fast forward two seasons and it's, it's just this bizarre half... It's just this awkward middle child stuck between the shitty prequels and the god-awful sequels. And it's trying to like play off of both of them. Like we're building stuff up to disappointment, but we're not forgetting the past disappointment. Instead of focusing where they did initially, which was right in that middle where everything was nice and cherry. Episodes four, five, and six, the OGs. They played off it beautifully. And now they're just, they're going like this. And I hate it. And there's no structure and there's no semblance of narrative. So, this episode, it's a fucking fetch quest again. They're treated to Lizzo and King Jack Black. I, I, I really don't care enough to look up the names or what their roles are on this planet. It, it means little to me. He at one point was working for the Empire or something, an Imperial, Imperial officer. Now he's, he's a goody two-shoes guy. The planet's th thriving. They're doing great. And they have hired... They're mercenary bounty hunter Mandalorians as an army at their disposal to make sure that no one, you know, crosses them. Since they can't apparently have their own army on the planet because of some dumb reason, they have their own mercenary set in the distance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point this out because um, the plot of this episode is so fucking dumb. I'll, 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 get, I'll get to it. Anyway, they're going to let Bo-Katan talk to her crew after they solve the mystery of the island. Which is, why are some of the old droids doing bad stuff? They're doing some evil stuff, I think. So they have to go talk to the officer 
who's freaking Christopher Lloyd. Doc Brown, who looks to be 92, is playing this character with evil intentions. We don't know it at first, but it's pretty obvious. He tells these guys to go figure out what's going on with the droids. They, they take their different approaches. Mandalorian starts kicking one. He's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. That one's bad because I just kicked him a bunch and now he's chasing after me. So clearly he wouldn't do that if he was under my control. There's an awful chase sequence. Looks like it was filmed on the back of a Nickelodeon studio lot. Uh, awful. Just awful all around. There's weird neon colors going on. Nothing fits. The color grading's all over the place. They take that thing out. Profit? Like, I, I don't know. What was the point of it? They then go to a Mose Eisley type. They then go to a Mose Eisley tavern. Talk to some of the bots there. The droids are all pissed that they showed up. And this this thing just never ends. This story goes on for an eternity. And all I'm thinking is, what is the point? The whole reason we're on the planet is to talk to the old crew. Instead, we're doing Looney Tunes adventures. We're doing Tiny Tunes adventures over here. Without the fun and shenanigans. It's just misery. Eventually all roads point back. Eventually all roads lead back to Christopher Lloyd's character. And yeah, he, he, he reveals, uh, I hate you people. I liked the army. I liked the good old clone wars day, general grievous, yada, yada, yada. I have a giant comical size red button right here. All I have to do is push it and all the droids turn evil. What was stopping him from doing it initially? What's his slow roll plan here? And why is there a giant red button and no one's questioning it? It's just so ridiculous. Here's the point I wanted to really get to. This mercenary crew, these bounty hunters for hire, that are just hanging out, eating sandwiches in the back lot of JCPenney's, waiting for something to do. Why couldn't they be looking at... Why couldn't they be on the search for this great mystery that is the angry bots? The Decepticons causing a muck. Why did Lizzo and Jack Black have to conveniently hope for two more Mandalorians to show up so they could say, you two figure this out. We have like 60 dudes over there, but they're, you know, they're on lunch for the foreseeable future. It's so stupid. Speaking of stupid, the episode wraps with them finally going to the crew, who's again doing nothing because that's what the Mandalorians do. And Bo-Katan is like, listen, we all need to work as a team. We need to fast and the furious this thing, become a family again. Leader, uh, the new leader is like, <laughs> you left us. You went on a hunt for a stupid black saber. That guy's got it. You don't got it. You didn't challenge him for it. And now you want to challenge me? She challenges him. What does that mean? Well, that means they just start open firing in front of everyone, almost killing other members of the Mandalorians during this. It, it just happens. She's like, I challenge, do you accept? It's like, yeah, I accept. <laughs> it's so ludicrous. And this fight's okay. It's not the worst. It, it, it's at least something's happening. Mando's just sitting back watching. Din, Din Djarin's like, yep, this used to be my show. I used to have a point. Here, take my saber. I don't need it. You're the real owner anyways. It's yours. So because of some Harry Potter loophole bullshit, she convinces the others that, yeah. <clears throat> so because of some Harry Potter bullshit loophole, Din Djarin's like, oh no, she's actually the real owner of the saber because you, you see, listen, chill, chill. Listen, here's what happened. I was down in the Mandalorian caves, um, ready to go into the pool and become a, a real Mandalorian again. I know, I know. Don't ask any questions about that planet that no one thought to just check out. Because they heard from a friend of a friend that it was toxic and you shouldn't go there. But no one thought to just at least touch down and scan the area. I did. It's not toxic. Don't even ask a question about that though. I'm a full Mandalorian again because I went in the pool. Anyway, while I was down there, I got bombarded by a bunch of bad guys. In comes, in comes Boca. In comes Boca. And she, she gets the saber 
she takes out a guy with it or four because he beat me up and put me in a cage stole the saber now she has the saber she gave it back to me but really it's hers because she defeated the foe who defeated me even though i'm still alive but because he took the sword at one point that's the same as defeat because the loopholes are everywhere in this dumb thing and our whole cult is so ridiculous i god this show pisses me off it just pisses me off she gets to walk around helmetless she looks cool she looks like the only somewhat intelligent person here outside of the fact that she wants to be part of this dumb tribe he though is just so sad and lame like yay i'm a mandalorian again i get to keep doing exactly what i was doing the whole time wearing this helmet while i take a shit while i go get the newspaper while i go to bed at night while I do everything, how fun. What is the point? What is the point of any of it? What's the point of this season? So it ends with her in a heroic pose, holding the blade, looking at the camera, winking, and saying to us, Strong female lead! And then it zooms in slowly on Grogu. It's about time. And then it slow, and then it slowly zooms into Gragu. It's about time. <laughs> Can't remember if it's Grogu or Gragu. I'm gonna get that one right. I'm gonna look it up after this. The pronunciation. A dum da dum da da dum dum dum. A skip it. Bum 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 bum. This show is dumb. Dum 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 dum. This show is fucking dumb. Boom 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 boom. Well, there's my rant on The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 6. We're almost done with this thing. I think there's eight episodes. I hope to the gods there's eight episodes. Because this nightmare needs to just be over. And then we can get the book of Bo-Katan. We can get the book of the fish lady from the beginning of the episode who has more character development than Din Djarin already. Maybe we get the book of uh, Lizzo. Get the book of Lizzo in the mix. And then on episode four or five, we'll resolve stuff from the book of Boba Fett. And then episode seven or eight, we'll resolve whatever's going to happen at the end of this. Mandalorian. Season three. Season kill me. Let me know your thoughts on this season as a whole in the comments below. Are you just completely checked out now and you only watch this because you need some sort of sanity back in your life? Or are you hate watching it because, again, you're, you're like me. You're, you're dead inside. Like the video if you had some fun. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews and TV show thoughts, especially on The Mandalorian, every single week. I'd love to have you here. Take care. File saved Mandalorian. Sometimes I forget I'm live streaming still. Okay, it is 11.30 my time. I'm, I'm getting pretty tired. Didn't really get too far in this drink. It feels like I've been nursing it for quite a while, but it's probably best that I don't drink anymore. Um, last chance for any Super Chats. We were hot and heavy with Super Chats on the last stream on Friday, so maybe Friday is just, that's, that's the time. That's the time to stream. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Um, if you have any questions, I guess I could just answer them right now. We don't need to do Super Chats. Those are just those are just appreciated. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll open it up for some questions for a couple minutes, and then I'm gonna head out. Scott asks, "Do your kids ever tease you for being a YouTuber?" Uh, no, they think it's cool. They don't really watch. My kids aren't really on YouTube. I don't I don't like. They're still pretty young. I mean, Olivia's 14, but Connor's only 10. Almost 11. 
God, the kids are getting old. Um, yeah, they just, they're not really in that space yet. We try to keep them offline as much as possible. So they know I, I do videos on YouTube. Olivia is actually, I'm teaching her to edit. So at some point, I'll have her edit like the shorts so that her and Lindsay can like become a little team and help me promote the channel because it's just hard to edit all this crap. Obviously, I'll have her edit the ones that are a little less risque. <laughs> the ones that are a little easier to just chop a couple times and be done. <clears throat> Uh, Define asks, what's your dong size? Just just right to it. Uh, I think it's probably decent. Average. I'd say average. I'm not I'm not here to blow my cock. Do you like the recent trilogy of Star Wars? The 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 sequel trilogy? No, I don't. I like Force Awakens a lot when it hit. I still would like it a lot if I knew it led to something, but now I can't even watch them because I, I honestly think The Last Jedi is just absolute trash. It became fun to hate on that, but I was hating on that from day one of seeing it in the theaters because I genuinely thought it looked amazing. Trailers were fantastic. Visually, it's stunning. I think it's probably the prettiest Star Wars movie ever. I just don't like the movie at all. I think, I think it's a horrible story. I think Ryan Johnson's a great director, though, and he is a good writer. And he just wanted to make something different the problem was he took over a franchise that was already eight movie or seven movies deep and decided now's the time to kind of shake things up instead of staying the course and leading to a a natural conclusion and then rise of skywalker at that point i was going in just looking for a fun entertaining movie i got it so i didn't mind that film even though it's absolutely stupid the, the plot's terrible um but i don't want to watch any of them ever again i don't like the prequels either though so What video of yours brought in the biggest increase of subscribers? Uh, that's a good question. Like in recent years? I don't know. Um, oh, I actually I do know. The Matrix Revolutions, or whatever that stupid movie was called. It's not Revolutions. It was Reloaded, Revolution. What was the new one called? Revolutions was the third one. The Matrix... I've blocked it out of my mind completely at this point. I don't even want to think about it. The Matrix 4 brought in a large chunk, thousands of new subscribers. The Buzz Lightyear video brought in a decent amount too, but that was definitely the most popular one in recent memory. Which movies are you looking forward to and why? Uh, I actually did an April, on the last live stream, I did uh, movies coming out this month that I'm looking forward to. There was like five of them on there. Air, I'm looking forward to. I think that that might be the other one that's out this week. I have to look. I might be seeing that tomorrow. Uh, Air, I'm really looking forward to. I think, what else was on there? I don't know. I'd have to honestly go back. I actually researched ahead of time what was coming out this month. Oh, Renfield or Renfield, that vampire one with with um, Nicolas Cage looks fun and Nicholas Holt. Is it Nicholas Holt? Two two Nicholases in the same movie. That's unreal. There was like five movies this this month alone that I'm looking forward to. Outside of this, I haven't really looked beyond at what's coming. Indiana Jones, I'm very nervous about. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, I think, is going to be good. Although, even then, I, I'm just I'm just so burnt on the superhero shit. Flash looks cool. Eh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm honestly week to week at this point. When the movie comes out, I see it. If I like it, great. If not, eh. Do you like the live-action Scooby-Doo films? Alan, Alan asks... Uh, I, they're okay. They're fine. They're fine. I, I think I did a movie. I know I did a movie feuds on them. I did Scooby-Doo one versus two. That was a fun video. I can't remember if I did it for my channel though, or for real rivalries on screen rant. Um, yeah, those are James Gunn written. I think he, he wrote one of them for sure. 
Yeah, they're fine. They're they're silly. Oh yeah, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse for sure. Looking forward to that. I think that's a part one, isn't it? Or two part in that thing. I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. Evil Dead Rise was on my list as well. I'm looking forward to Evil Dead Rise. Yes, April. April's a solid month. We got a lot of good stuff. All right, it's 11.37. I could probably play a little bit of Hogwarts. I'm really liking that game still. I'm probably about 80% through it, like tasks and all. I'm really enjoying the world, really enjoying all the, they put so much into that game, it's insane. Just walking around Hogsmeade is amazing. And then the castle, of course, Hogwarts, and the fact that there's an entire map of stuff, very impressed, very impressed with that game. They could have made a show or a movie about that. Would have been very nice. Very well done. All right, guys. Uh, I hope this was okay. I think it went pretty well. You get a little, a little bit of the insight of how I film my videos and then the editing that's going to be involved with them and just the amount of work it takes. It's fun doing this live. I was doing this live on Twitch. There's a bigger audience here. And hopefully I will stay consistent with it. Fridays are the day I plan on doing most of the streaming stuff. So, and that has a much bigger audience. Um, yeah, it, it, it's all about consistency. So I'll get there. I'll figure it out. But this was a good time. Hope you, hopefully you had some fun. And I, I'm looking at the wrong camera. I can look at this one now. Hopefully you had some fun. And we'll do it again this Friday. Probably around the same time. 9, 30, 10 o'clock is what I'm shooting for. Stream will keep getting a little better as I figure things out. But uh, for the most part, yeah, it's just going to be me doing live filming. I do want to bring back the poster breakdown videos. I think those were fun to do. And I have the green screen. You can't see it, but I do have a green screen over here. And it's really easy to just move this stuff around and shoot that way. I also have to get stuff on my second channel, Adam After Dark. That skip-based channel, I do want to keep pushing that as well. So I got to get material there, which means actually filming stuff for it. <laughs> so much all right thanks again we'll talk to you soon oh my god right as i'm leaving gumo i think i said it right sumo sumo gumo what's your favorite video game of all time mm, he asked me such a loaded question i'm trying to think of the game i played the most and then I'm trying to think of the game that I had like the fondest memory of. Honestly, because of the period in my life where I was at, which would have been high school transitioning college, Halo 3 was the game I played more than any other game in the world. For multiple years straight, I was living and breathing Halo 3 multiplayer against my friends and online. The multiplayer component of Bungie's game is like bar none untouchable or it was at that time so that's definitely like top five ever uh like original mario brothers i think is is such a classic iconic game that you could still play today and it would it, it, i do sometimes bust that out and i'm like this game's still amazing it's so simplistic but the controls are so perfectly you know, executed and it's a freaking eight bit system. It, it just is charming. It's a charming game. I really love uh, Uncharted 2. I like Naughty Dog's games for the story and the spectacle because I'm a movie guy. They kind of fit with, you know, that whole universe. Last of Us was a brilliant game for the story. The gameplay itself isn't anything I find that fascinating. It's kind of tedious, but the story and the, ca the characters and the performances are just hands down like unbeatable. Trying to think what else. GoldenEye was obviously another one of those games that I played the shit out of just because it, it really just has to do with where you're at in life. Um, now I just don't have time to play games like I did. And there are games. I have a game on my PS5 I haven't even touched yet, which is God of War, the second one. I mean, technically it's like the, the seventh or eighth one, but the second one of the new series. Haven't touched it yet. It's there on the system. Along with like Sackboy Moves, or not Sackboy, Sackboy's Big Adventure, that was free this month for PlayStation. Haven't touched it. 
kind of wanted to try it out. I like the Sackboy games a lot, the Little Big Planet games. I mean, yeah, great question. I just there there's so many games I've played over my lifetime. At different points, I leave good memories in games. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where, but if you ask me, like point blank, I'd say probably Halo Three, just for the gameplay, the visuals at the time, and the amount that I played that for sure. Oh man, Max Payne was awesome. I agree, man. That was a great game. I love Max Payne. I could talk video games forever. All right, now I'm leaving for sure. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. Take care. I don't actually know how to stop the stream from YouTube. <laughs> stream, it's right here. Okay, end stream, end. Goodbye.